Wambuzi chariza mumina ere You deserve a photo shoot every hour It's your hour Camera, camera, lights, flash, click Check, 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 pose uh, Oh, swag, drippy, drippy, click Check, up, pose Hey everybody, welcome to Her Hour Season 2. Whoop, whoop. As you can see, I am by myself in the comfort of my home. Um, yes, we are in lockdown yet again. 2021 is pretty much just as bad as 2020, guys. Okay, no, I rebuke that. Touch wood. Um, no, we are back in lockdown and uh, instead of us just waiting for life to get back to normal because hey what the hell is normal anyway but instead of waiting for lockdown to lift we just thought hey last year taught us about doing things online doing things virtually and being able to stay safe but still getting the job done so we've decided to do our podcast virtually and yes and this is what brings us to this really awesome dope um influencer series that we've kind of um thought up and started up and the series is going to be featuring a lot of really interesting cool funky guests um i'm yeah <laughs> so we're gonna get right to it and yes i am now here with my favorite faves of the favoring tenderness of life in lockdown virtually <laughs> hey jordan how you doing <laughs> what's good <laughs> mwah, 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 mwah. and today as the first of our guests on this really awesome uh super dope um series we have the amazing 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 i'm not going to introduce her i'm just going to say she is amazing she will introduce herself <laughs> yes. my earrings are loud <laughs> <laughs> yes have you got a blanket <laughs> <laughs> but guys, I put this choker on and it's really choking me. <laughs> you didn't I'll think try and <laughs> I will try and survive. <laughs> Just don't don't suffocate on us now. So yes, as I was saying, we are joined by an amazing, amazing trailblazer, you know, trailblazer, jet setter. And woman who's literally, in my opinion, doing the most. And like, not the most as in you're doing the most, but like doing the most as in, hey, the most. Uh, yes, I'm going to let her introduce herself. How are you doing? Good, good. I am King Her. I am mostly known as a DJ, but I'm also a TV presenter, brand ambassador, entrepreneur. I don't know if I'm a model. I don't know where that came from. I'm hearing these things now. Um, but yeah, I'm doing the most, but not the most. Yes. Not the most. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the most in, in the in the in the in the in the what you call in the mature kind of way, like not where it's like right. yes, yes. Unless it's on TikTok. Because then uh, no, but it's another, have, another yeah. person. That's not Sumi. <laughs> two different brands. People need to realize that it's two different brands. Yes. <laughs> Yes, and um, what, why it's so cool that we actually have you as our first guest for this influence series is because one of the brands that you, what is it, endorse or you ambassad, amb ambassad. <laughs> represent, let's say represent. Let's keep it simple, <laughs> one of the brands you represent is Kuva. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Ching 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 ching. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna open my kuva with the scissors because I don't have a bottle opener. That's just how. So um, you know, Christmas is coming soon. Listen to me. We're still in oh. January, and um, a, 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 a bottle, bottle opener open would be nice. I'll buy you a bottle. <laughs> When no, is your Valentine's. Valentine's is the next gift giving situation in 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 life. Bottle openers for Valentine's Day, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you one for what Valentine's. You, you It'll, have hearts on it. It'll have hearts on it. I'll get you ah, okay. a, a bottle opener and the chocolates. Yes. What wine? 
with wine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, I actually, then I, if I'm getting you wine, I'm not getting you chocolate because I don't have like a Kim Kardashian budget. So sorry. <laughs> but look here, look here, guys. I, like Valentine's is coming. We have to be nice to each other. It's 2021. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You might also use my scissors though. Yeah. At least it's got an opener on it, so that's a pretty swagged out scissors. It's like that a- helps a lot. Yes. <laughs> Swiss Army knife scissors, love it. So yes, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Kuva has agreed to generously sponsor our series, which is amazing because we we basically um, manipulated them into <laughs> into hooking us up because we're like, wow, we're gonna have your brand ambassador too. So, you know, like, hey, we know people in places. <laughs> so so yeah. let, me, let me let me spill a little bit of tea since this is the first episode. Yeah. So being part of Kuva, right? We're going to look for people that are actual big trendsetters. So I see both of you doing things right now. Yes. Things right now. Yes. So there is something coming up and I would like to include both of you in the works. Of uh-huh. this in the works coming soon coming, coming soon. soon coming you, soon you see inside people guys that's why we know inside people <laughs> we made it yes we made yes. it Jordan. finally <laughs> yes and the nice thing about it is both of you as individuals jordan's got her own space and her own platform and her own movement that she's pushing and on your end you've got your own platform your own movement that you're pushing now the thing with me is i love it when ladies do that so i've been speaking to kuva about you too so let's see let's see what happens coming soon coming we love it we love it so yes so um Today, we're basically going to be talking about um, influence, and um, we're really excited to have you here. And I think just to kickstart the conversation, the series, and everything, is to ask you, what do you understand by the word influence? What does influence mean to you? Um, Well, on my end, influence to me means creating some sort of movement, um, inspiring people under a certain um, how do I how do I put it into words? Like I feel like picking up a dictionary and reading the dictionary term, but just being influential that's part of an, that's part of the word influence. So it's 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 actually instilling some sort of action or some sort of movement within people. That's what influence is to me. Oh wow, that's dope. That's dope, Jordan. Um, okay, I think that influence is basically knowing that you are someone or, or sometimes it's not knowing it's 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 this thing where you sort of you are oh, how do I even use this word you are a vehicle for you are a vehicle by which people um, oh this is so hard let me I know right let me un- un- untangle. <laughs> untangle the words in my head okay so being an influencer is basically you are someone that society looks to as you know the medium by which they will follow through or i don't know if that makes sense like you they look to you as someone who is going to be a conveyor of messages conveyor of trends conveyor of like you know what's the latest, what's the greatest, what's popping, what's, Mm. you know? So I think it's just someone who consciously or unconsciously um, people look look to as um, the it girl or it guy or it them person in between. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I think I agree with both of you. Um, Yeah, influence, I guess, is just the ability to to get people to, to feel a certain type of way. So... Like, I can see y'all have the whole hair to the side thing. And like, when, <laughs> when we started, I was like, should I take off the hat and put my hair to the side too? You see? I just the said the memo, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jordan knows the struggle. When it's, you already get those days. Just do this. Just do this. Yeah. <laughs> just do Order. this. Nah. Nah. <laughs> So yeah, so I, I, you know, so that's basically what it is. I don't think it necessarily has to be on any um, 
anything too complicated. I, I won't bring out Webster's dictionary states influence as, but like, I just think that it's the ability to make someone feel a certain type of way. Like, and I think also get them to follow through with the way that they're feeling because of what the right, thing is right. them. Because I don't think influence like completes itself where it's just like, oh, I should have done it. Like now, I don't think you fully influenced me. If you had, I would have taken off the hat and done it. Then I would be like, yeah. Hundred percent. So right now y'all are right. eighty-two like percent of. <laughs> Maybe in the next ten minutes the hat will come off. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's still buffering. My brain is still buffering. Like maybe, like I think it, it could work. Like I could just. Anyway, so yeah, that's cool. Um, so the, <laughs> um, so okay, cool. So this is what we believe in influence to be. So my next question would be you getting into becoming a DJ, a radio presenter now a model, a uh, brand ambassador. <laughs> was, was this all intentional? Did you, like, did five-year-old King Her like wake up and say, I want to be an influencer and this is how I'm going to do it? Or <laughs> did it just like happen? Um, so five-year-old King Her actually wanted to be like Picasso, just paint. And oh, then... Wow. And then have my paintings in a museum and ta-da, that's my life. That's what I thought because I was always very artsy mm -hmm. and very shy, very timid. Mm -hmm. um, never never really mixed that well with friends. Like I, I had friends, but I was just a bit, I was the weirdo, basically. Uh, I was thanks. quite weird. And um, every time, like whenever my mom would take me to my parents, well, not my parents, my family, and then I would greet and things, I'd start crying because I was very, very shy, extremely Dude. shy. And, <laughs> and then um, I went through a lot, like during your adolescence and everything, you know, you go through your ups and downs and you go through various relationships and milestones. And then you go through some very sad moments in life. And as you're, as you're maturing and trying to discover yourself as a person, you sometimes lose yourself completely. So I had lost myself completely to the point where I started listening to a lot of music and music started to influence the person that I am today, which is why I always say music set me free. If y'all have any money to lend me for a tattoo, to get a tattoo that said that says music set me free, that's another gift for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there so people know. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I feel like I feel like you didn't tell me when your birthday is. And I'm December. still waiting. My birthday. So yes, first I, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. Oh yes, I, I even wished you on your birthday. Never mind. <laughs> Moving along swiftly. It's it's Jesus' birthday month. And so he gets the spotlight. And then my right. then comes Boxing Day. And everyone is covered, because that's the term. Like when you're hanging, everyone is covered yeah. yeah. because they've been covering the day before. And then the next day is my birthday and they're too tired because they're waiting for New Year's Eve. Exactly. <laughs> so my birthday is actually on the 27th of mm. December. It's not that far. I'm accepting gifts in advance and I'm, I'm accepting uh, belated gifts as well. Uh, That's <laughs> fine. Okay. But yeah. So through that entire journey, I, mm. then, I then fell in love with music. And when yeah. I fell in love with music, I was I never thought I would actually be at this level in terms of DJing. I used to actually be a bedroom DJ. DJ on my laptop, in the bedroom, have an imaginary crowd, and then wham, bam, a couple of years go by, and boom, there's King Her. So I'm still, I'm still myself, still in shock with some of the moments that I do go through or some of the crowds that do pull in when we were allowed to have crowds. But... Right. It's, it's, it's been quite a journey. I've just been going with this journey and continuing with this journey. Mm. I can also be, a, I can also be a bed, bedroom DJ, but you have to take me for dinner first and then make a kiss me on the neck over here. And then, you know, a few things after that. And then I'll be your bedroom DJ. <laughs> that should be like a Valentine's Day edition. Right? Like, uh, I can be your bedroom DJ. Hey. Hey. <laughs> has a killer killer playlist because i've been seeing a lot of sass on jordan's page you know some of the times like when i when jordan posts something then i'll go straight back to the profile I'm like nice i need that dress i like that outfit i like that outfit. <laughs> you see jordan's out here influencing king her look at her look at you yes. look at you girl i'm telling you sometimes i'm even Oh. Wow. Oh, 
okay, okay. You 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 make me feel like I, um what is it? It's not you've been playing and things, and I'm like, hey, I need to learn how to play an instrument. I can't be this DJ that can't play a single <laughs> instrument that knows how to play a digital instrument, but uh-huh. an actual physical instrument. It takes uh-huh. a lot of skill to do that. Yeah. So I'm coming for lessons from both of you. <laughs> no, I'm very jealous of y'all because y'all are so creative. I'm like, <laughs> y'all are so, so, so creative. And unfortunately, like I went, I always tell Vera this, like I went to an art school. And so I have all this pressure on myself to like be this creative person. And when I, I have so many creative friends and sometimes it gets so overwhelming because I don't know, creativity for me is such a different experience. Like, I don't know. It's just so weird. It's such a weird thing. Like, I don't know. But when I see y'all, it just comes so naturally. It just flows out of your pores. I'm like, oh, I need some. I need <laughs> some of we, that. That's how we are as, as creatives. We are actually our worst critiques. Mm. We actually mm. criticize ourselves very brutally. And mm. what we see as ourselves versus what other people see as like, portray in terms of our creativity you would you would not even believe yourself when someone tells you my word you are extremely talented mm. and then you look at your work and you're like but it kind of sucks and everyone else is telling you it doesn't but because you are your own like biggest critique you'll always think right that. right i don't know <laughs> yeah i don't know no that's so true um so jordan for you did you think that you were going to be an influencer or did this just happen? Um, you know what? I um, honestly, uh, I, I, we've, I said the story to y'all before, but basically um, when I was little, obviously there were a lot of reasons why. Like people used to just look at me because I was different and like, I did things differently. People always used to ask me from a young age, like, what, like, what's wrong with, like, what's wrong with Jordan? You know, like, mm-hmm. I remember when I was in, 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 in preschool, my first day of school, I wore these, these really cute shorts and I wore these socks and I wore them like thigh high, like up to my thighs. And then there was like a piece of skin between the thighs and the shorts. So yeah. I was feeling cute. I was feeling myself like, you know, first day, first, and I was feeling cute. And then I just remember that was the first time I had like, not the first time, but like one of the first times I had been exposed to the fact that like people are going to stare at you and people are going to make you feel so different. Like, you know, mm-hmm. so I think I I had several, a lot, let me not say several, but a lot of those experiences throughout my life where I would go into a new space and people would stare at me and be like, oh, who is this person? sometimes good sometimes bad I would hear so many things I would get screenshots from friends being like this is what's happening in our in our group chat right now people are discussing you like pictures of me in people's group chats like Jordan is this Jordan is that whoa whoa, whoa, whoa." like discussing me word for word like picking me apart and saying oh the hair oh the what oh the lip oh there was even a time guys when I was just out of high school, I was like 18 years old. Hmm. No, yeah, I was 18 years old and I came back to Zim and one of my friends was like, you know, honestly, there was a rumor being spread about you that you had got lip injections. Ima- imagine, guys. So that means that your lips <laughs> I look just that good. I was like, Are you your, really look, your lips look that good. <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, what? Lip injections on my budget, guys. Like, you obviously don't know what's going on with me. Like, <laughs> who can afford that? But anyway, so so for me, I don't know. It's been a thing of like, it's I've been a very, very controversial person my whole entire life. So for me, influence for me has been from a different approach. It's been very controversial. Everyone is always looking at me to see like, what is Jordan doing? Like, never to be like, oh my gosh, you're so amazing. Like, keep it up, keep it. It's always like, scandalous oh my gosh oh what is jordan who are you dating oh jordan is with someone's man oh you know there was oh yeah no there's, i have too many stories guys i have too many stories like this one time i got so drunk in the club and i was <laughs> having a good time and i was dancing with this man who was probably like 40 years old <laughs> the next day yeah the next day there's pictures circulating of me like grinding on this man someone's father like oh jordan likes people's fathers what what, 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 what." like so i'm just like to be honest this is how it has been i i i think 
one thing that I said to y'all is that because I had been looked at for so long, to a certain extent, it became part of my reality so that when when things weren't in that kind of a situation, it felt abnormal. When people weren't talking about me, it felt abnormal. It feels abnormal, you know, like it's such a big part of how I grew up, of part of my experience that like it's my life now. And I don't think I could live without it. I don't think I could live in a space where people are just not I'm not relevant. I don't <laughs> I don't think I can do that. Like it's just it, it gives me some, a, a little piece of joy. You know, a lot of people say some people are made for these, this industry. A lot of people are made to, to be an influencer or to, or to be famous. I'm not famous, mm. but I think I am one of those people who I think I was made to, to live this life. Like, I think I have the, the backbone, the guts. I can take it. Like, people can say whatever they want about me and I will take it. Like, I don't know. So for me, I think, yeah, from a young age, I don't think I knew I wanted it until it became a situation where it became a real part of my reality. And I was like, this is who I am. And I guess now I want it. So, yeah. Thank it's you. your calling. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is where you're at. This is your spot now. <laughs> Yo. No, I completely agree with um, both of you. I Like, um, for me, I will not lie. I am not as humble as the two of you. <laughs> I wanted the spotlight. Like <laughs> I used to watch this TV show and like, it was literally about a young girl who wanted to be famous. And I was like, this, this is, this is my life story. Like, this is what I want. Like, and I like jumped at literally any opportunity to be in front of a crowd. Like it was just, it was really crazy. And like, I guess as a kid, you don't really think about it like from a very serious standpoint and um yeah it was just a thing that happened and people knew me I had older siblings so everywhere I went people like my reputation or my family's reputation always preceded me so I high my school from primary school all the way up to high school my older sister went to the exact same school as me so every time I got into a classroom the teachers knew like oh you're Charlie's little sister I'm like yeah this is me eh, eh, eh. and I think I felt <laughs> I felt the need to have to like, I think establish myself because everyone just kept saying that, oh, you look like your sister. Oh my gosh, you and your sister are so similar. So I think that's what also pushed me to really like go out there and try and have my own like identity and whatever. And obviously like getting older and, you know, realizing that I need money, I need a job, <laughs> uh, adulting. Um, yeah, I think that's when I started taking a more serious take on like becoming an influence and stuff like that. But one of the things that I did notice is that it now stopped being about like, oh, I want to be famous and I want to have money and I want to drive fancy cars. And it now came, became more of a, I want to change lives. That's the angle that I now started kind of going with. And it now, a lot of the things that I do now and that I've started doing and that I've been doing for a while are very intentional in terms of, okay, I have, like, there was a time, I used to do a lot of kids camps and there was a time on my Instagram and on my WhatsApp statuses, I used to like post lots of very funny adulty kind of rude jokes until like one day, one of my kids like inboxed me and they're like, hey, coach V. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I need to be careful what I post on my <laughs> social media. Can't be out here like doing the most because they're like 10 year olds that follow me and they see me and I, I give them this whole talk about now you need to be like this and like that. And then they go on my Instagram and they see me doing the opposite, like it doesn't really compute. So I think nowadays I'm a bit more conscious of what I upload, what I talk about, what I associate myself with, just because of the kind of image that I want to portray for the people that are looking at me and influenced by me. So yeah, that's that's my two cents. <laughs> I have a question. Oh my gosh, you've just given me a question. Sorry guys, I know that we have like a set of questions, but like, I really, I, I, this is a really important question for me. I just want to understand y'all. And so for me, my question to y'all is, and I will also answer it. My question is, what is, what kind of image are you trying to portray? Like what, what is the true representation of Vera on, and the true representation of King Her? Like when you look, when you look at yourself and when you want people to look at you, what do you want them to see? Yes, first. <laughs> <laughs> okay so i want people to actually see king hun as a very strong woman 
a woman that can actually speak for herself, that can create an influence of change, a positive, a positive movement of some sort. Like for me, the direction which I want to go is I don't want King Her to just be the DJ. I want King Her to be a brand, to be a household of some sort, you know. Like I always keep saying to myself that I I can't I can't live this life and not have accomplished some sort of change that's influenced something. And so at least, you know, when, when it is my time to leave, I've left something behind that continues, you know, something that, that will continue for the next generations and the next generations forever it's continuous and i want it to not just be okay king as a dj but i want king her to be a very strong household for for women especially for women because there's a lot of things that you know especially in the in the industry for example the music industry is very tough mm. and it's easier for the guys to make it and if you're on top already as as a lady you're on top and you're untouchable and for an upcoming artist, they've got to go through 20 million more challenges just to get to at least some form of recognition. Mm -hmm. Or if it's in any other industry, you know, I believe that, you know, we should be, we should be treated equally. Are you guys there? there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I felt like, I felt like you guys froze for a bit. You know, like when you're trying to, when you're trying to troll someone on a pole. <laughs> And you're trying to troll someone and you're like, it's frozen. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of looked like that. So it's like, wait a minute. D did y'all just freeze on me? <laughs> no, and I yeah, think it did freeze for a second. It froze for like a, a, a yeah. few seconds and then it came back. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but that's what I want. I want King Her to be more than just a DJ. Um, that's why I've been looking into mentoring people. That's why I've been looking into talking about, you know, more, having more discussions on various platforms because I don't want people to just know me as a DJ or just know me as this person that's going to speak on certain platforms about certain topics. I want to try and mold it into something so that, you know, mm -hmm. if there's a King Her institution one day, mm -hmm. you're free to go to. If there's a King Her workshop Okay, happening, Oprah. Okay, Oprah. Okay, Oprah. Thank yes. you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, that's how I see King Her. Mm -hmm. Love that. Jordan, answer your own oh. question. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys, can I tell you something? I had deja vu. I just had deja vu. That's so weird. Oh. Um, but anyway, okay. Um, so for myself, uh, just on what King Her said just now, like the whole idea of a mentor, I, I think I, I think of the idea of wanting to have someone to mentor me a lot. Because, you know, a lot of my, my experiences are so, so new and I, I don't know how to navigate them. And I don't have anyone to rely on to ask questions about like how to go about certain things, how to, like when I encounter certain people, certain places, like well, what, what, is, what am I supposed to do, you know? Because for me, you know, there's not a lot of people in my position who are like in the LGBTQIA plus community who are... Um, finding themselves in the spaces that I find myself in. And for me, that is, I, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm cocky or like I'm big headed or whatever, but for me, I'm essentially trailblazing in a lot of spheres that I find myself in, or I'm the first person from my community who has entered the space in, 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 in the respect that I am in, you know, like, there's no one that I can really look to as a mentor who has been in the position that I've been in or encountered the people that I've encountered or like done the things that I've done or even is the same age that I am doing these things, you know? So for me, I, I think when I think of my brand, I think obviously the first thing for me is trailblazing, pioneering and being someone who is doing things and doing them, even though they, they may not be anyone that's doing these things, like wanting to do them regardless, being fearless, being, being brave, choosing to go ahead, regardless of what the expectation of society might be like, you know, it's, it's wanting to always do more. That's my thing. Like do more, 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 more. Like there's never enough of anything. There's no such thing as, oh, you're too this for this industry or, oh, you're too this, or, you know, you don't fit here or you don't fit there. I, I think I'm very like, 
I, 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 I like the word um, being the antithesis of, of everything. Like if someone tells me no, I'm going to say yes to myself. And that's the only yes that I need is the yes from myself for me to move forward and to achieve the things that I want to achieve, you know? And I think another thing is I'm someone who is so open to learning. I think that I'm aggressive in wanting the things that I want, aggressive in learning, aggressive in wanting to be at the level that I want to be at. And unfortunately, sometimes that aggression translates <laughs> into different parts of my life. Like, I think I'm just someone who, like, I'm a go-getter. I'm like a mover and a shaker. And like, when I want things, I want them now. Like, I, it can be a, a little bit bratty to a certain extent, but it's because I know what I want. And when I don't get what I want, like, I think you guys get what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you know, when you know what you want, and you know exactly how you want it yeah. like you're gonna push for it and mm -hmm. when it doesn't come that way obviously sometimes you're gonna like you're gonna have a little bit of a, a fit so yeah i think for me it's it's i want to be someone who the kids in zimbabwe in the kids in the lgbtqia plus community especially can look to and say you know what? People told me that I couldn't do that, but there is someone who is doing that in our community. There is someone who is pushing these things. There is someone who is, you know, entering spaces that normally people like myself from my community would not be allowed into, you know? So yeah, I think that's, that's what it is for me. I want to be someone who is constantly reclaiming spaces, constantly, um, <laughs> Just being fearless, being being um, taking what I want when I want it respectfully, you know, and and not not disrespecting myself by allowing anyone to to try to dictate what should be mine and what shouldn't be mine. So yeah, <laughs> I like I like I think um, for me the Vera brand is just mostly about sharing <laughs> is i guess like, <laughs> it's just about i i think it's two main things the first thing is about sharing um interesting stories and that's like it's literally something that i do a lot with my music a lot of the times i'll write a song and people ask me like oh my gosh did you go through that i'm like no i just thought like if someone else went through this wouldn't they want a song about it i don't know like <laughs> that's just how i feel but i like telling um, other people's stories especially the stories that aren't told often enough like we have enough love songs in the world guys um, I think we need other kind of stories to be told and I think music is one of the best ways to kind of tell those stories um, the other element of there and that's now more of you know things like incubator and you know the her our platform the work that I do at Mortar Republic and things like that is now more about like literally pushing people to do shit like, and that's me just putting it very <laughs> blatantly, but like the idea, I love to just inspire some sort of change in people. I love to see someone reaching their full potential. It breaks my heart when I go to different communities and you see kids doing something like, oh my goodness, like if you were like in the right space, if, you know, if you had the right kind of funding or if you had the right opportunities, like you could be somewhere. So I really, yeah. I think that's the other element of my brand is just about trying to create as many platforms and opportunities for people that won't get it as easy. So I wouldn't, I, I'm not the kind, I, I, it was one of the things that I hate the most working with certain organizations is when they keep pushing the same brand over and over again. And I'm like, nah, someone needs like three pushes and then they're fine. Like, let's move on and like start helping other people. So that's the kind of person that I am is like, I'm such an advocate for the underdog. I, I will support the underdog. I will try and create platforms for the underdog. This is why I don't say that I'm a feminist as per se. I just say that I'm, a, you know, I'm an advocate for human rights because I believe that if you are a human and you deserve something because you're a good human, then like I will help you as much as I can in my capacity to get what you need. So yeah, those would be the two parts of like the Vera brand and stuff like that. <laughs> So yeah, so given um, that we're talking about, I love that everyone spoke about invoking some sort of change. Like Jordan spoke about being a trailblazer. Um, King Ho, you spoke about, um, you know, just inspiring other young women and helping out other young women to like get into the industry and things like that. So given 
all of our wonderful um, inputs. How do how do we all feel about um, you know? Do we feel that as an influencer, as a person in a position of power or whatever, do you think that we have a responsibility, or people have a responsibility to um, what you call it, to kind of speak out for the underdog? So, for example, um, last year there were the Black Lives Matter protests and movements that were happening in America. There was also the, I think it was a year before in 2019, if I'm not mistaken, um, there was the, the movement, um, what you call it? The Me Too movement. So like you'll find that a lot of these movements pop up and a lot of celebrities choose to be quiet. A lot of influencers choose to be like, eh, not gonna talk about this, this is not my story. Um, so what do you think? Do you think that like um, people in a position of influence have to participate in these kind of discussions? Do they have to join these kind of movements or like it is what it is if they want to, they can, if they don't want to bowl? On my end, I feel like if you do have a very strong following, especially being an influencer, like if you've got like 3 million people that will that you can influence and if you tell them, hey, so I've printed these t-shirts with a, I don't know, with a, with a banana on it and um, I'm going to be wearing this for the next week. You'll see 3 million people buy that very same t-shirt that just has a banana on it because they've got that influence. So I feel like if if they do... It depends. You know what the thing is? There's, for me, there's two types of influences. Actually, maybe three types of influences. There's the ones that will keep quiet, say nothing, stick to their things, and stick with their brand and not even get involved, mm. right? Because they don't know whether saying something or not saying something will do anything. Or maybe they may be too selfish to even say anything because they're living a very cush life. Mm. Or maybe they just don't know, don't have that, they're not educated enough about what's going on. Then there's the other influencer that will do it for clout. Mm -hmm. And it's okay, I've I've got my 3 million followers and this is trending. For example, maybe, for example, I don't know, Cats Lives Matter. And so because Cats Lives Matter um, and, and I don't really know much about what's going on, I'm just going to tweet about it and things and make it look like I'm also a part of this movement that, you know, save the cats because their lives matter. And they are the cloud chasing type of influences. Mm -hmm. Then there's the genuine, actual genuine influences that do believe in human rights, that do believe that their influence can create a, a change, that do believe that what they say has a very strong input in, in terms of who actually um, listens or watches them or follows their influence and, and know that, okay, um, I'll do the research about what's going on. Cats' lives matter. Okay, we're, we're killing so many cats. So this is very important, you know, and you need to create, I need, if I'm a person that has a very strong influence, I feel within my heart that I also need to push this movement because yeah. it's the right thing to do. So that's why thinking about it now, I just feel like they fall into three categories. It's either category one, two, or three. And the question is for an influencer, which one are you? Love that. Yeah. I love that. Um, I don't know. I think for, for me, I think speaking back to like, just referring back to everything that I said, one thing that like <clears throat> for myself in that just as a relation into what I was saying, I was saying that like, it's important for people to see someone like myself being represented in the, in different spaces. And I think the same thing applies to people, everyone else who, who people mm -hmm. look to, you know, I think people want to see, a representative representation so representation is so important when it comes to like different matters different situations because people want to see someone that they can rely on someone that they look up to someone that they trust trust mm -hmm. um speaking on things that they think are important or they feel are important to them you know um another thing that i was thinking was the fact that, you know, um, a lot of people like, like King Ho was saying, there's that, this cloud chasing thing, people are chasing cloud and you can really tell when someone is, is not serious about, about a situation because 
they'll keep quiet. If there's nothing involved, if there's no paycheck involved, if there's no way that they can benefit from it, they will keep quiet, you know? But I think that um, to a certain extent, if you are just keeping quiet or if you only want to get a check out of, out of things, then it's not really being socially responsible. I, I think when you get to a certain place, you have to understand the privilege that you have because of the position that you're in. It's more of a thing of understanding your privilege and understanding that because of your privilege, you have more access to resources, to be able to speak on certain things, to be able to have a platform where messages can be more widespread. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that if other people had your platform, they could do so much more with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about it in our, just the three of us. I'm, I'm 1000% sure that there's some kid out there who, if they were given everything that we had, they would be so far. They would be so far because to a certain extent, I think we become blind to our privilege. Mm, we yeah. become blind to all the things that we have access to that we sometimes become like, we start complaining and thinking we become entitled. It's actually entitlement. Mm -hmm. We think we deserve to have this. We should have this, you know, and not speaking out to, in my opinion, is a form of entitlement. It's, it's this thing of feeling like, you know what? I don't have to do this because I am in this position or I am doing because it's not affecting you. But for the people on the ground who are being affected, they don't have the privilege of not speaking out because it's happening to them in their daily lives. It's happening th to them on a daily basis, you know? Like in terms of the Black Lives Matter thing, this thing of racism, it's a, it's a daily struggle, guys. It's a daily, daily, daily struggle. And so for someone to say, I don't, I don't feel like speaking on that, it's because you're privileged. It's because it doesn't affect you. And it's because, you know, you get to sit over there in the corner and be a spectator and watch from your high horse or your high tower and say, oh, poor them. Uh, maybe next time you know but other people don't have that they don't have that privilege of saying maybe next time yeah. maybe next time they'll be dead maybe next time they'll be getting dragged in the streets maybe next time they'll be getting abducted and raped by state agents because they speak up you know what i'm saying so for me i don't know i think to a certain extent it's entitled but i i also understand when people say no it's my brand it's my what i'm, I'm protecting myself i'm what what, 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 what. like we're all entitled to make our own decisions. Go ahead and make the decisions that are best for you because at the end of the day, only you can do what's, what you feel is right for yourself. And mm -hmm. if you don't feel like speaking up is what you need to do, then please don't do that. Definitely. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I am all for people who have the platform, you need to say something. Because, and especially, I think for me, the biggest thing is, um, when it directly affects your community. I'm not saying that we always have to like participate in crazy major like political movements or whatever, but there's certain things that affect your community that, and it's not a political thing. It can be a situation that the sewage pipes are burst in your neighborhood and the pipes, that sewage water is just flowing. You need to speak up about that. There's, you will not get arrested for writing a tweet to say, yeah, like, but also the sewage sucks, you know? So I think sometimes um, it's it's really important for people to remember like that there's certain movements that you can't say it's not a part of my brand. If people are getting raped, if there are girls getting raped and you are a woman in that country where these girls are being raped and you're like, well, it's not a part of my brand, then sweetie, being a female shouldn't be a part of your brand then because, <laughs> you know, these are things that um, are affecting your direct community. So I think... I think even sometimes to a certain extent, I can't even be mad at the cloud chasers because they're still like pushing the movement, man. If we had like 50 cloud chasers out here tweeting something and like they're tweeting a movement, I would prefer you tweeting that movement than you tweeting the buzzer challenge or whatever TikTok challenge that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that challenge and I thought, is it worth it? Nah. <laughs> nah. too much <laughs> but yeah like and i have nothing against people who do challenges please i did the don't rush challenge last year and i took it like seriously <laughs> like it was my job but what i'm just saying is in the same breath i am the same person that you'll find at a doctor's rally in town you'll find me marching with the nurses you'll find me putting hashtags on my statuses and on my whatsapp and whatever because i believe in all of these movements so yeah i just think that 
it is important that when you're in a position of influence, because you, that voice that you give is the thing that can like push this movement to that next level that it needs to get to. And that's why right. it's so important. Like when you have influence, right. it won't kill you to just say me too, or just right. a retweet. Don't add a quote to the tweet fam, just retweet it and like leave it at that. Find the least dangerous tweet to retweet about the movement and leave it right. at that. And that's perfectly fine. Like we will love you. Right. <laughs> You know, I, you're making me think, Vera, that you know what, people, t I think if you're not willing to speak out, at least be someone who is going to do donations, or at least be someone who's helping people out on the ground, you know, like, helping people to find places to live if they've been, like, disenfranchised, or if people, you know, like, the kids are starving, people are dying in the hospital, like, do something with your privilege, like, at the if you're if you're just doing nothing i think that's a problem yeah. but if you are at least helping if you're choosing not to speak out there needs to be something happening to balance that out yeah. you know yeah. yeah that's so true sorry just to also revert back to that that is very true and i think that's why sometimes you'll find especially even in american in the west a lot of celebrities aren't just like i'm not just an actress or just a singer like they have a cause that they push and i think this also just allows i know it's a pr stunt as well but like i think it also serves as like a blanket to protect them when they don't say something when something like when shit goes down like they're pretty right. because people be like okay king her didn't say anything about this movement but i know that she's training young djs i know that she's working with female creatives and you know she you know she promotes them she gives them gigs she posts about them like we didn't know about this random dj but now we know about them because king her helps out so it's like okay a get out of jail free card because you know she didn't post about i don't know some crazy movement that's going on so i think sometimes people are understanding and they're forgiving but like if you're just the person who's gonna post about oh living my best life while a pandemic is happening then like we will judge you we will judge you <laughs> and speaking of like judging people and stuff um do you feel like this is for everyone again um do you feel that people um, within positions of privilege, people who are social influencers, do you think that they're out of touch with reality? Like we've seen um, so many, like I'll give a good example. Um, what's her name? It's Kendall. Kendall Jenner did the Pepsi ad where for those of you who don't know the advert, she went and like basically was an advert of a riot basically starting up. Then she goes up to the police and then she hands him a Pepsi and the cops are like, Cause. right. I think we can show them a snippet of yeah, the, of the clip. Yeah. So it's right. a snippet of the part. So why this thing was so outrageous um, for people, especially in America, was that they were like, fam, if you start, and I don't even think it's just an America thing. I think it's also a Zen thing because we know when our peaceful protests happen, you cannot give the officer a Coke or a Pepsi and think he'll smile at you and be like, nah, we go. <laughs> power to the people <laughs> that stuff does not happen so that's why it was such a ignorant it was really an ignorant like ad that they put up and this is also like i'm not absolving pepsi from because they had a whole marketing team that sat in a room and they're like this is brilliant so Girl, this is why it's pepsi and not coke like full stop <laughs> but coke had some bad adverts too hey coke had i remember they had the one with um some kid that looked like a monkey or whatever and that backfired what? But like, <laughs> yeah, like coke also like a lot of these big corporates in fact just even just speaking in general because these big corporations are also big influences and they make big mistakes i can't remember which clothing company it was that had a black kid wearing a shirt that said something like hey i'm h and m yes and i'm like Really? Did you not look at this advert and think, this is not okay? So yeah, anyway, to cut a long story short, <laughs> what do we think? Do we think some of these people are ignorant and don't know any better? I, I, I honestly do think that, that, you know, some of these people aren't really in touch with what the reality of things are, um, especially with what's going on. Um, but on the other hand, you know, there's another thing of, okay, yes, you may not be in touch with reality. And genuinely, some people have very chaotic schedules. Mm. And they're going from one, one, one gig to the next gig to the next ad agency to the next shoot to the next this. So to then be in touch with reality during a very chaotic time would be very difficult. But then again, as a human being, you still, regardless, need to know what's going on in the world. You still need to watch the news. 
You still need to know what's happening. You still need to know, okay, is there an asteroid that's on its way? You know, as busy as I was, you know, last year and the year before, mm -hmm. um, I would still check there were asteroids coming towards Earth. Come on. If I knew that, <laughs> man, I mean, you still have to somehow in your busyness mm -hmm. or in your famous life or in your glory of things, still try and be as relatable as possible. Mm -hmm. And you still need to try and understand what's going on what's going on in the world i feel like as a person just as a person you need to have that responsibility yeah. as a whole yeah. and not just sign up to something because you're getting money for it like if if that pepsi ad had that pepsi ad obviously offended a lot of people hmm. and the thing is did you care about how many people you were going to offend and what it represented or were you just all about the money and it's all about, it's, it's, it's a choice that you have to then make in life. Are you doing this for money or are you doing this for a cause mm. of something? I think that w from when you were saying, Vera, you know, big, big corporations like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, what, 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 you know, a, a, a person at a big level or an influencer is also a brand mm. to a certain extent. Mm. And so... When you think about a brand, you think about a team, right? You think there's, there's a team of people who are influencing this brand to be and to, to put out what it's putting out. Because, you know, everything, everything requires a team, regardless of, even if, if it's just a person, you know, we can, we can boil it down to the team being the people who are in their immediate environment, their family members, their friends, the people who are helping them to make their decisions on a daily basis. And so in me saying that, I think the point of what I'm saying is that the, the reason why people end up being out of touch with reality is because on their team, there is not a good representation of society, you know? So when you end up saying things that are out of touch, it's because there's nobody in your circle who you have to think about and consider to, think, to say, if I say this, is it going to offend my friend? Mm. Let's say my friend's name is, is Kuva. If I'm going to say this, if I say, you know, something like, you know, the, the, the black label is the best beer on the market. Am I being considerate of Kuva? You know, mm. that's, that's being very inconsiderate mm. because this is a new brand. People haven't get, been given the chance to taste this thing. You know, mm. like we can't just decide now that this is the best whatever that's a bad example yeah. but <laughs> um <laughs> we, we what i'm get saying it, is that like people you need to have enough people in your circle like for coke for example or pepsi or h&m it's because there was no one on the on their staff who could say you know what honestly i don't think you guys should release this ad because from my perspective from my community a b c d e f g and this is why we think it's offensive mm -hmm. you know that's what you need in, in your circle. And so if you're out of touch, it's, it's, a, it's a direct reflection of the people that you keep around you. It's a direct reflection of your management, your teams, the people you work with. So if you're working with out of touch people, it's 1000% that you're also going to be out of touch. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think. Like in reality speaking, sometimes it's not just the 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 influence. Right, sometimes people sabotage sometimes you. Actually the, it, sometimes, yeah, true. And it's, sometimes it's also the company itself because there are certain top ranking brands, um, companies that are actually big brands that that don't support causes like Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and, and and don't employ a certain race of people and things of that sort. And and during the during the time, for example, when the Black Lives Matter hashtag was trending. Um, there were a lot of companies that were seeing fire because they weren't supporting the same cause. And that then gives you a reflection of how, how things are in, in, in reality. And the thing is, so as, 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 as a certain brand, are you also representing a certain cause or do you care about what's happening in the world? Do you care right. about, yeah. about what's going on in terms of, racism or gender gender based violence or anything of that sort do you care about about what's happening in the lg lgbtq plus community do you care about that so for me it's like are you picking certain influences where you know that 
they don't really care about what's going on in the world and it's relatable in terms of what your brand is pushing whether you care about it or not so it's actually it's actually sometimes it's also the brand itself that an influencer would be representing that are also at right so it's right it's, it's more of what are you trying to put out there what are you trying to influence are you trying to influence a totally different thing from what everybody else is saying or are you influencing something that's going against what people are actually trying to march for a difference for mm-hmm. right no that's so true i think um yeah i just completely agree with both of you and i think that a lot of big brands a lot of individuals sometimes i feel like they choose to be ignorant they choose like this is not my problem so i'm not going to try and advocate for it i'm not going to try and speak on it because it's not my problem i'm sleeping very peacefully in my fancy house with my beautiful car and my you know good life so i don't know your struggles so i'm not going to speak on it um and i think that sometimes even that ignorance is very intentional i think so i i honestly strongly feel like as an influence as a as a corporation in a position of power it's your responsibility like what um you're saying king her is it's your responsibility to read a newspaper to watch the news like i was saying to a friend i was like i obsessively was watching um what you call it like the daily show and um like all of these um you know american shows and whatever because i really wanted to understand what was happening in america every time i'd see something pop up i'd be like i need to understand what's happening just for my own like for my own sensibility same thing with the end sars movement when i saw it i had to educate myself on it before you know i just hopped on the bandwagon or just chose not to say anything about it and i think that's what's so important is that it doesn't hurt you to spend like 5 minutes a day guys just like checking out the highlights you know world news highlights you know what's happening highlights and then like making a a form decision from that and it is very true that a lot of these corporations a lot of individuals don't want to surround themselves with people that are on the ground that are grounded that can tell them that can keep them in touch with reality oh because now i'm earning a certain amount of money i'm only going to hang around with people that are earning that right. amount of money that aren't going to you know you know so yeah. that right. our lifestyles are matching up instead of just sticking with my normal friends and like i'm not saying don't make new friends but i'm just saying that stick to your old friends because they keep you true to who you are so right it's right yeah I think one thing that I encounter a lot because I do consultancy work like um for um e- equality diversity and inclusivity and so what I encounter what I'm I'm coming to encounter a lot in this work is that like people are just portraying an image it's just an image and they want you to believe that we are pro black pro abortion pro rights pro lgbtqia plus pro women pro whatever all those pro 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 because for them it's a capitalistic game it's more for them it's more about the more people we can rack in to buy our products the more you know and and it's not actually a thing of like putting in the work and actually wanting to be in- inclusive actually wanting to be equitable or you know actually wanting to have diversity in your company because a lot of these brands they'll say oh we're pro this pro that pro that but the whole board is white people or the whole board is men you know and so it's like what you're saying versus what is reflected in your company is like completely different things you know what i'm saying because there are a lot of celebrities who are who will be like Oh, love the LGBTQIA+ community, but they have zero people that are fr- that they're friends yeah. with from the community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll say, "Oh, I love black people." Wah, 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 wah. Zero black friends. Mm-hmm. Zero. Like none at all. Or every all the black friends are like used as tokens, you mm-hmm. know? So mm-hmm. for me it's like a lot of people just want to portray an image because they know what the optics look like when it yeah, comes yeah. to influencing what it looks like in this br- this this industry it's all about optics 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 the pictures we take the performances we do the hashtags the what 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 what, what it's all optics and so the for me the only way that you can really see who a real person is is behind the scenes how things are represented behind the scenes you know and like given this whole um optics thing like 
cancel culture is something that really developed last year where we saw a lot of people being like x out of everything where someone could make a mistake and people like nah we're going to cancel them i think a good example was um right right nick cannon nick cannon got canceled like a joke like yeah. he made one i i will i will not lie to people i watched that video and okay i guess it's my ignorance or whatever but like i i didn't really what is the video are we going to insert the video we're going to insert the video okay. <laughs> well, the, we'll insert because it's a long ass interview so we'll just insert the bit that was considered the problematic the part yeah the problematic right, part right. exactly and um yeah so people canceled him after that like he was like i just saw on my twitter i was like what nick cannon is canceled he lost whatever no more wild and out i'm like what is happening so yeah but i think, I think- I think he 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 got cancelled because I think okay he he was trying to express a certain point because he does believe in a lot of shady things African tribal culturalism and um and and like he he's very passionate about that and how black people um came to America and the story of how you know we've got like African people have their own ways of healing their own land that they were meant to live on and you know the climatization in accordance to where we originally come from so i think he was trying to express himself that way but then he went a bit too far <laughs> a bit too far but sometimes you know like how you're talking about cancel culture sometimes i just think that like i 2020 has just made people very emotional that's that's just the honest truth in 2020 you you you're going through a pandemic you're not able to see your friends you're not able to see your family we got used to to, to going out whenever we wanted to mm. and then you've got all these restrictions now you have to wear a mask now you have to stay healthy now you need to be meters away from each other mm. then you have to now contact each other digitally that costs money and then you can't work so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go into the internet and there's Kendall Jenner once again in a hot body at the beach and then you you're there broke unemployed and you don't know what you're having for dinner and so it it really messes up your emotions and it gets you in your feels to the point where you're like where did i go wrong in life like what to me and the minute something goes wrong it's like right now all this energy that i've been okay you did this wrong you used to cancel you <laughs> you know mm-hmm. but it's it's because we've just in the past few years <laughs> in the past few years i feel like i feel like we've been very we we were more woke than anything we're more aware of what's happening we're more aware like if we had to if we like today something happens in another country and it's a disaster within within minutes we know what's happened mm. so had we had we been in our normal busy lives without a pandemic we wouldn't actually care about what's happening in in the next country or or or, or a movement that's happening in america or a movement that's happening back here at home because we would be too busy fixated on the day to days of what we've been doing with our normal lives and i think now because we've got more access and more time to actually see what's happening in the world that cancel culture has been born and it now exists for me that you know it 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 exists in a good way and it exists in a bad way in a good way way certain people need to be canceled for for all the things that they've been doing wrong mm. and then if they if they have an opportunity to, to to be forgiven and to be a better person that's good that means that that person has changed for the better or it could be in a bad way where you really didn't mean what you said and you want to apologize and you you didn't have enough research or know what was going on completely and you mistyped something but that's not a reason for you to be canceled so i don't know <laughs> right i think we live i think the times that we're in now is like the pc times politically correct times everyone is just trying to be as politically correct as possible like you know there's so many people coming out with 
oh, this is wrong. Oh, oh, this is what? Oh, you shouldn't say that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, we're offended. Oh, my gosh. You called us. You called me a cappuccino. I'm not cappuccino. I'm actually toffee. You know, like, it's, it's so, 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 so much. Like, I think one thing that I said is that everyone wants to be oppressed. In 2021, everyone wants to be oppressed because they feel like, oh my gosh, yeah. black people are saying that they are oppressed. So I also want to be oppressed. Oh my gosh, the LGBTQIA plus community is saying that they're oppressed. So I also want to be oppressed. You know, like it's white people finding random things to be oppressed about. Like, and so people just want to cancel people and say, you are not going to have this because you are oppressing my community. You are making us blah, 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 blah. Yeah. like it's, it's it's trying to it's i think it's an anger it's actually like a pent up anger that the world is going through because of like all the injustices we faced mm -hmm. over the centuries and people are now like we're trying to take back the world take back our power and we're realizing that you know what governments don't really have our best interests at heart you know and these systems that are yeah. all put in place don't have our best interest at heart and so humans because of technology because of the way that things work the internet is the only system in place that is ungovernable guys it belongs yeah. to every single one of us you know and so because of that because there is no sense of like structure on the internet people are now like we are the power and mm. that's a fact of life regardless of government yeah. regardless of i think it's human beings are now finally at the point where we're realizing we are so so powerful in numbers like if we all come together and say you know what king hers hair is looking too blonde she is appropriating <laughs> white women we are tearing her down <laughs> Let's cancel her because you know, she's supposed to be a natural straight right. head, dark black right. hair. Like if enough <laughs> white women with blonde hair came together and they were like, she is appropriating our culture. <laughs> and they were like, cancel her, cancel her jobs. So what, 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 what? You see what I'm saying? So for me, I think, yeah. I, I, I think cancel culture doesn't exist but I think it's real. It's very real. It doesn't exist, but it's real because it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a thing. It's, I think it's people realizing we have so much power, but because yeah. of the systems of the internet, that power isn't as strong as we think it is. You know what I'm saying? Like you can cancel someone online, but they still have jobs offline. They still have deals that are pending offline, you know? So I think cancel culture is an internet sensational thing. If the internet did not exist, cancel culture would not exist. I hear you. I completely hear you. Um, yeah, cancel culture, I think it's very toxic. I think people should be given a chance to, to make up for their mistakes. And I think because it's ungovernable, it's just, a, it's literally, um, what do you call it? It's subjective right <laughs> so if i just feel like someone needs to be cancelled and then i'm going to start a little thing then everyone who's had a little thing against that person who i'm trying to start a thing against right so like, yeah me right. too me too there's no way to prove i can start something up today and be like jordan called me a bitch yesterday and then so i'm like oh my gosh the other day she rolled her eyes at me when i was talking there's someone else oh my gosh yes she just walked past me the other day and then it becomes a whole thing that we hate jordan jordan should be cancelled but like it, there's no proof that you're a terrible person. It could just be some of the things could be true. 90% of yeah. them could be lies. So, I um, mean, look at that situation of, I don't know if you, if you, if you know about it, about Jeffree Star, the makeup artist that, that had an affair with <laughs> Kanye West. And that's the reason why him and Kim Kardashian are getting divorced. Like it was one person that started a rumor and this rumor and the internet is dangerous. Like if someone can, if someone can start a rumor like that and it can go viral, Jordan's like, I think I've got something to say about this one. Like what, what, what is your take on that topic? Do you think it's a rumor? <laughs> you know what? It's obviously a rumor guys. Like anyone can create a rumor. Like, like I was just talking about it just now, guys about the lip injections thing if enough people are talking about it people are going to make it th seem like it's a real thing and then they'll start connecting the dots saying 
oh my gosh, look at the way that her lips do here. Look at, they, they're a bit too full. Oh, you know, people start to connect like dots that don't exist. Yeah. And they'll be like, mm, that's why they're in the same city. That's why they're what, what, what. That's why, no, you know what, guys? The world is too, like, people are too smart. People are too smart. Kim Kardashian would have made a statement. I don't think it's real. You know, people, ugh, the internet is just boring. It's just so, 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 <laughs> so boring. And they're just Basically, making Jeffree yeah, Star even like, more relevant. Like, yeah. That's the thing. They're giving him so much power by, by talking about this and creating this huge rumor about yeah. it. So right. to say, like, what have you accomplished if you were planning on accomplishing anything? Have you really accomplished anything at the end of the day? Right, right, right. We're all up in people's business. <laughs> oh, my God. But, like, that's just how society, like, I don't know. We've, we've created such a toxic um, online kind of behavior movement whatever i don't know what we, what we can call it but it's just yeah. it's insane and it's crazy and i think um like i don't know if this is a really good time for us to kind of bring the conversation um to round it up and then come up with like some sort of a solution because i think yes we've like talked about like oh my gosh influencers need to do this and oh my gosh this is what's happening with the world but like if we were to be standing in an auditorium filled with a thousand budding influencers, like um, what would what would you say to them? Like what kind of advice would you give them? What would you encourage them to do? What would you tell them not to do? Would you be like, don't do it, stay away? Or like, okay, <laughs> what great advice would you be able to give um, people who want to become influencers, people who want to be in the limelight? Jordan, you can start with this one. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I think I think I'll just tie in something I said in the in the in the in this conversation and I'll I'll just say make sure that the people you keep around you show a true representation of the world that we live in. You know, I think if you are going to be a brand that represents people, you have to represent people respectfully and and with the right sense of representation you know so you can't represent people if you don't have any idea of the kind of people that you're representing you know so i think it's important for you to just keep in mind that you are not the only kind of person that exists on this planet you your perspective is just one in like a, a, a sea full of 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 raindrops for example, you're just one raindrop in an ocean full of raindrops. Yeah. So I think be willing to understand other people's perspectives. Be willing to hear people's stories. Um, as much as you want people to hear your story, let uh, take the time to hear other people's stories so that you can understand that you're just one person. Yeah. I think, I think just to add on to what Jordan has mentioned is that you know, the, the, the bigger you get as an influencer, you tend to lose yourself. And um, that's one of the most dangerous things that you can possibly be because now you've got that pressure of trying to do everything you can in, 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 in every possible way to try and impress whoever you're influencing. Or if you're chasing that bag, you're going to chase that bag and start to lose yourself, which is something that... Um, not that I technically have lost myself completely to the point where I'm like, oh my God, I don't know who I am anymore. But, you know, the more you just keep pushing and you keep giving as an influencer, you start to neglect who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. And when you start to neglect who you are as a person, you start to be less relatable because now it's just, it's all about just trying to make that bag or trying to, trying to build those numbers. And you're just fixated on that over and over and over where, for example, if you post something and it gets like maybe 7,000 likes and you post something else and it gets like maybe 300 likes and you start to, you start to feel down about yourself. You start to feel like, am I doing something wrong? Am I, am I losing followers? Are people not connecting with me any, anymore? So as an influencer, I think influencers need to really also remember not to lose why they actually got into what they got into doing, whether it is influencing for a cause, whether it's influencing for a brand, whether it's influencing for, for, for some form of artistry, 
always remember to stick to who you are and always remember that when it gets heated, step back, mm. get in touch with self and say to self, why did I do this in the beginning? Did I do this because I want to, I want to, I want to create a change of some sort. Did I do this because I want to help out a certain, a certain movement of some sort, or did I do this because I just want to make money? Like, why did you do this to begin with? And, and remember whatever influence that you're portraying out there are millions of people because there's now the internet has given us access to millions of people so now millions of people are actually going to listen to what you have to say so if you tell millions of people jump off the building they'll jump off the building is that the right thing to do no it's not so remember also why you're doing this and why you chose to be an influencer Mm. always choose to be an influencer for the right reasons and not for the wrong reasons Mm. That's so true. I can't, I can't agree with either of you more. Like, I think definitely the issue of being true to yourself is just something that like keeps resonating with me. The more like I think about, um, you know, the issue of being an influencer is that once you're true to yourself, people will understand who you are. They'll understand what you represent and they won't expect that much of you because they know who you are and you keep showing them your true self. If, you, if you're wishy-washy and all over the place, then people will be like, but like, so if you also do this and you also do that, then can't you also do this? And then when you don't do the thing that they want you to do, then it's now like a whole, it's a crime against humanity <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's definitely very important. And also just have surrounding yourself with people who are grounded. You need, I think sometimes the biggest mistake, um, you know, people make is that once you make it in life, you forget the people that helped you to get there because those are the people who, they're your foundation basically. And um, there's no building that stands forever without a good foundation. And if you lose your foundation, you will fall to the ground and crumble and disappear. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) remember your foundation at all times. Um, I think now this is such a great place for us to kind of round up the conversation. And I just wanted to ask you before we end up the conversation, if there's anything you want to add that you think we might've left out or maybe even just like plugging in some of the really amazing things that you're going to be doing in 2021 so that people can be tuned and yeah, <laughs> in touch with some of the amazing work that you're going to be doing. So yeah, go for it. So for me, 2021, I really, I, I really thought that 2021 would be better than 2020, but uh, we're into 2022. 2.0. We're still so at the beginning. I've, I've we're still really, at the like, beginning. I, I think I think you should have hope. We're still, we're still at the December. beginning. Let's cross. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers. Yeah, I hope so. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. But I, I, I always like. Like I said in the beginning that uh, music was something that set me free and that's what actually got me into DJ. I've actually had a phobia of actually releasing music. So I produce music, but in order for me to release, I always feel like either it's not good enough or the, the, concept, the concept is oh just not, not what, it, what it is supposed I to be. I like, make music. <laughs> I do. Oh, I actually do. That is so I've dope. Seen, I've seen, <laughs> <laughs> I've been producing music for 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 years now, and oh. I never actually had the confidence to actually release um, any music or any any sounds of any sort because I always right. have. This, that's why I say we are our biggest critiques. Yeah, and so this year I really want to learn to to accept myself and accept the things that I do and see them as good enough right. for me to actually take that brave step to say, okay, I'm going to release something. Whether it's whether it's good, whether it's bad, I've done it. And this year, I actually want to challenge myself to be a stronger person to connect with self because I've been so busy over the past couple of years before the pandemic came and then in last year, the pandemic was there and then we're still trying to figure out how we're going to maneuver around it. And so this time, it gives me time to, to actually figure out who I am as an individual. And that's something that I want to do. I want to I want to figure out who Natsumi is. Not who we all know who King Her is, but <laughs> who is Natsumi? And I think those are the one, those are the two major things that I want to focus on. And um, going forward, I'm looking forward to, to, to working with a lot of new people on different platforms, work on things that are totally out the box. 
Um, because I was, I've, I've always been in a position where I've had to work with certain people because I was aligned with them. But to actually venture out and say, hey, I'm, I'm King Her, you're Vera, you're Jordan. How about we start something together? I don't know. For example, a podcast. How about we do that? And it will be a podcast that is totally unfiltered. How about we do that? Hmm. Like, I want to have the courage to do that and not actually have people approach me and say, hey, so King Her, we're starting a podcast, you know, because that's what always happens. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm still yeah. that shy person, but I'm trying to step out and really figure out who I am and and how best I can show my side of things because I think everyone has seen the King Her side. Mm. They've seen the straight face, DJ on stage, walks in, everybody's like, oh my God! And then you're there, play your set, leave, and you're like, right, peace out. No, I don't want to be that person anymore. <laughs> I want to be someone that you can approach and be like, you're actually quite dope. So, right. really chill. You know, that's the right. fun. <laughs> Just a disclaimer. That's, I don't that's think that's my. <laughs> I don't think I'm one of the people that like is shy to say hi to you. I think every time I see you in the car, like, oh my god, god. Oh my <laughs> me too. Can I tell you when I met King Her, guys? I was like, oh my gosh, that's King Her. She just like plays at Evitro. Like I, I used to know you from Evitro because I always was drunk at Evitro, like <laughs> getting down. Like oh my gosh. And there were so many times I had drinks with Sherelle, like in the in the in the in the crowd, you know. And so it was like that thing of I know King Her as the DJ, but not as a person. Yeah. And then when I not met you that day, I was like, wow, this person is actually like good vibes. Like you're you're actually such a re- like a kind, a really kind person. Aww. You're so sweet. You're so like considerate. Yeah. You're like you give good vibes. Like you give like a a very familial vibe like you're you're a family person and i can feel that about you like you care for your own and you care for the people that you love like right like i can feel that vibe from you like you give very much that energy like if you want to be dope with me i will be dope with you but like if you don't want to be dope with me then that's hey, dope i'll also stole it your birthday is coming right, up. Right, yes. yes. I was just going to say that, like, <laughs> so on your birth, on my birthday, maybe we can hear some of these tunes, like. Yes. <laughs> yes. I told you, let's make the arrangements. We can make the arrangements. Yes. I'm over. Yes. With my mask on yes. and yes. my hand sanitizer. <laughs> with my shield and everything that I need in the bubble we'll come with and our everything. PCR test. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no but yeah i think i think you are a very approachable person i think you're a very kind person i don't i think because you stand behind a dj booth like you've said it's it puts you at at like a distance from other people but i think when people see you on this podcast or even just in real life like you get a better understanding of who king her is who the brand Mm -hmm. is behind king her Mm -hmm. and you were speaking about women's empowerment and i think the name king her in itself is just so empowering because it's like i'm a king but i'm her i'm i'm the king her you know what i'm saying like intentional so intentional (laughs) i feel that so beautiful so amazing i think thank you so much i don't think i know thank you very much for coming through to this podcast and really like kickstarting um, the series. I think we really chose the g- best person to just kickstart this thing with. Yes. And yes. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time out. We're so excited about the music. We're going to put you to task to say that by the end of this year, we want to be jamming to King Her Jams. We want to be jamming to... Right, uh, in my phone. We I'm wanted an right? When I have a dance party in my room. Pressure. Pressure on me. Yes. Yes. That's the only way you're going to do it. (laughs) Pressure. 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 So, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, Everybody, please make sure you follow King Her. She's doing amazing things. You can check out her hilarious videos on (laughs) Instagram and on TikTok. Her handles will be here on the screen somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, over my face. <laughs> and and when we get back to having physical events and clubs opening and joints opening up, please make sure that you go and experience the King Her experience. Because trust me, like I keep using the word experience. It is an experience. 
you will not want to leave. And when she's rounding up, you'll be the person like, oh, <laughs> one more hour. <laughs> right, 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 right. An icon, an icon. You're iconic. You're iconic, sis. So you are iconic. So, yes, so and much. to all the other yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are plugging you. We are literally plugging you like a plug in the socket. Yes, that's how we roll here. And thank you so much to my lovely co-host Jordan. You are as usual a ray of sunshine and you're amazing and awesome. Our rangers, oh, make sure you subscribe yeah. to the channel, share this with other people, and make sure that you stay tuned for our other episodes. We have so many really dope guests lined up. <laughs> trust me you will enjoy so if you thought king ho is dope trust me like um yeah it should be getting better and better <laughs> as the season goes on but thank you so much guys thank you so much to kuva yes 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 supporting local supporting local yes cheers guys <laughs> ching, yes ching, 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 ching. Ching. <laughs> and yes make sure you um check out their socials um that we're also going to post on the screen somewhere and stay safe mask up and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell another friend that her hour loves you thank you guys thank you guys so much <laughs> <laughs> and jordan's just like